by here. So I have this book called Wooden Puzzles and it's by Brian Menold. It says 20 handmade puzzles and brain teasers. So I got this book years ago and it's been sitting down in my craft room. So uh, when Noah was over, we looked and we were gonna make one, but we didn't get to it. But we got to his project luckily, which I was glad about. But now it got me all excited about doing one of these puzzles. So I am looking at doing this puzzle right here. It's a five piece solid block puzzle. And it goes through the steps on how to do it. And then it shows you what it looks like when all the puzzle pieces, you know, when it's apart. And yeah, I think on, in the back it has uh, the keys to how to do the puzzles, which could be helpful. <laughs> Anywho, so I am going to make that one. Ah! Sweet. I set a three quarter inch stop block and cut these with the miter saw. I had some pieces that were already three quarters of an inch thick, so I ripped them down to three quarters of an inch wide too. The book says to use a cross cut sled and cut these on the table saw. I can see why that would be better and not cause so much tear out, so I will be doing it that way next time I hope. I had to let the blade stop after each cut so the piece wouldn't fly out because it tends to do that with the stop block in there. So slowly I cut out all 27 little pieces. And since I used the miter saw, I sanded all those little pieces. They had a lot of tear out, but it looked fine after sanding. The book has a bunch of jigs and shows how to make them. I plan to make all of those too, but for now I only made this one, which is a simple box to keep all the pieces square. I glued up a few spare pieces of nice plywood that I had, using my speed square to make sure there was a 90 degree angle there. All right, so it shows how to glue the pieces together. And he also says, when you put the glue on, you'll not make sure it doesn't like ooze out the sides, which makes sense. I'm gonna glue these three, or these four together, and these, one, two, three, four, five together. Yeah, so let's move the whole piece over there. There are diagrams that show how the pieces are to be glued together. So I glued all the ones together and all the twos together on that bottom layer and pushed it into the cubby to make sure things stayed square. And I made a design with the straight grain and the end grains. But I discovered I can do the design on one side, but on the other side it won't make a design. Anyway, I thought it was cool, so the top and the bottom have the design. Then I saw on the next layer that there was a number one, so I glued that in place. Then put all of the other blocks in place loose, just so I could square it up again. Then I saw there was a number two also, so I glued that one on too. And after that set up a bit, then I glued up all the number three pieces and putting back the other loose pieces to keep it square again. And Wally came by to say hello and get some lovin'. I noticed the number four blocks connected on two areas from the middle to the top layer, so I glued those two blocks in place and placed all of them on the top layer just to make it square again, just like I've been doing all along. Then also glued that number three that's attached from the middle layer to the top layer. And I let that set up overnight. Well, it was a few days later that I was able to come back. I'm looking at the puzzle here and you know, I've glued I've glued all of the bottom and then I've done some of the middle or all of the middle actually and now I'm gonna do the top layer and I think I already messed it up somehow because I had this pattern of end grain and the side grain or long grain and it should this should be end grain but it's not because it should be this Anyway, the puzzle will still work, but it's just, I think I, s let's just look and see. Let's take the top pieces off. 
And here is where I learned or it dawned on me that it is best to just finish gluing the puzzle pieces up all on the same day. So that was right. What am I looking at then? What am I looking at? See, it's right. Because now it's been a couple days and I'm taking some apart and I'm getting all mixed up. Well, maybe it's fine. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's just keep doing it. All right, so going back to... All right, so that is gonna go like that. So five. Let me glue this one on. And here is where I messed up because I glued a number five block to the first level when I shouldn't have. But this was an easy fix later. Yes, it is best for me anyway to glue these pieces all in one session so that your or my brain can keep it all straight. A-G-E gets to us all. Oops. No, no, no. It doesn't go on the bottom. Okay, it goes on the side. Okay, so it can go like this. All right, five, five, yes, like this. And like that. Okay, those fives are done. And now we glue the fours. So we have two of those glued. Mm, why? Why do we have to? Oh, because of that. So. So I finally got it all figured out and I had one more piece to put in. Just on top, baby. Just on top, right there. Yeah, yes, like that. Let's set that set up now. Woo! And about 30 minutes later, I came back to see if I could disassemble it. And I counted four pieces, and there should be five. So I laid them out like the picture. And I found the odd piece. So I looked, and I saw where the two were glued together where they shouldn't be. And it was that number five block that I had glued to the bottom layer. So I just cut that area apart on the little bandsaw. Then sanded those areas. Okay, I fixed that and here are the pieces. And now I have to figure out how to put it back together. And let me see, I do believe that he has a page that has how to put them together. Let me see. The solution is presented on page 140, so yay, let's go there. 140. Okay, here it is. So we have one, two, four, three, and five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Position one and two pieces as shown. So one and two, like that. Slide one and two pieces together to form a base of the cube. It worked. Place piece three on top of the base. Like that, right? Piece four straddles the top. This was piece four. Straddles the top. Oh, okay, like that. And piece five fits like that. Oh man. Okay. That was hard. <laughs> that was hard. Oh no. Oh no, it was hard. Okay, let's see if I can do it. So let's take it back apart. Okay. Nice. All right, let's put a finish on it. Okay, I'm gonna use uh, my favorite, which is husband's wax. Again, it's the Carnuba wax and mineral oil. And this says to add a wax, like a Johnson's paste wax, after you put the finish on. So this is kind of doing two things in one. So I'm gonna just do this all over all the pieces. I love them. Ooh, I love it. Ooh, I love it. 
I wiped this on all the pieces and then used a clean sock to wipe them all dry. Then I used some canned air to spray out any of the wax oil mixture that was trapped in any little nook and cranny. Okay, put it back in order of one, two, three, four, five, and let's see if I can do it. Do, and do, oops, like this. There, look at that. Huh. For my first one, not too shabby. Not too shabby. Yeah, cool. Put a shelf up. So I could put my block on the shelf. There it is. <laughs> if anybody's interested in this book, the Wooden Puzzle Book by Brian Menold, I will put a link in the description box below. Oh, thank you, Bobby. So thanks for joining me, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hey, so this was super cool to make, and I messed it up and got confused along the way, but it still turned out. The jigs in this book help to make the pieces super accurate, which would make it look better and make the pieces fit together tighter. But even without the jigs, I think it still looks pretty cool and works well too. So thanks for joining me, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye!